Today on Coding Secrets, I thought I'd take a look at one of the more ingenious ways we went about preventing piracy on our early games. The first game I ever had published was Leander on the Commodore Amiga. Now the Amiga scene was rife with piracy, and so many publishers obviously worked with developers to try and figure out ways of at least delaying the copying of a new game. Amiga games all came on floppy disks like these. This one obviously isn't being used for anything important, so if I pop off this protective sleeve, you can see the actual disk inside the cover. If I crack open the cover, you can see the whole disk, which is where all the data is stored. Now, if we use a very precise laser, we can burn a tiny hole in a very specific place on the disk. Why would we want to do that? Well, if we make a hole in a known location, as the game starts up, we can try and write some data to that location. If the writing of the data fails, then we know the disk is genuine, as there is a hole where the data should go, and so the data should fail. But if the data gets written OK, we know the disk is a copy, as normally you can write data anywhere on the disk. So, this code includes a file called protect.s, which has all the special copy protection code in it for checking out the disk, as I said. And it's called when we first load the game. This piece of code is the part that is called if the check fails, and we can see that it will cause the game to go into an infinite loop and effectively crash. Brilliant! Pirates defeated, obviously. Well, the casual game we're copying a disc may be, but there were plenty of pirates out there that were cracking games as a badge of honour, so it didn't take them long to figure out what code was causing the crash and remove it. Once they'd deleted those few lines, they were back in business and distributed the game far and wide. However, there was just one small problem. I'd included another near identical copy of the protection code. The file was called protec.s, with no T at the end, and it was going to very sneakily set a flag for me in a variable I'd called Dread Pirate Roberts. If you look at this line of code, you can see that I'm passing this variable to the protection code using the register A2, but I'm subtracting 428 from it. I want to keep the actual location of the Dread Pirate Roberts variable a secret, so I'll never look at it directly. Subtracting a random number from it makes it much harder for the hackers to notice it or think it important. This is the code where I set the variable to say that the game has been hacked. You can see that I'm adding the register D4 to it, and then offsetting that answer by minus 200 to throw them off the scent. D4 isn't even used in any of the protection code. In fact, if you look just above the call to the protection code, there's another routine called disk load, and if you look in that, you'll find D4 being set there to 628. So, Dread Pirate Roberts minus 428, which is where we started, plus the contents of register D4, which is 628, offset by minus 200, equals Dread Pirate Roberts again. So now I've snuck my it's a copy flag into the variable, I can use it to do all kinds of sneaky things. Here, I'm offsetting Dread Pirate Roberts by 10,654 and then adding 10,654 straight back to it, because using that in the code will disguise the variable again. Now, if Dread Pirate Roberts tells me this is a copy, then I check to see if it's loading level 4. If it is, then you can see that I mess around with the contents of three blocks on the map. The result is that while playing level 4, this essential platform now has missing terrain, meaning you can't get back up to complete the level, and the game has now, in essence, become a short demo. And just in case they added a level skip or something, this piece of code removes every piece of terrain from every other level beyond this in the whole game. And just for fun, this piece of code halves the damage you can do to every enemy, and each time Dread Pirate Roberts is hidden away behind a different random offset. The final result was that there wasn't really a properly hacked version of Leander for a very long time, as I'd also completely used every byte of memory, leaving no room for any hacked code. When a hack finally did appear, it was on four disks and required you to own double the standard Amiga memory. I guess the funniest legacy of all this was that people were continually phoning up the game's publisher, Cygnosis, complaining about being stuck on level 4, only to be told in no uncertain terms to stop pirating the game and go and buy an original copy instead. Till next time, this has been Coding Secrets.